to be back here with you again. Uh, we're going to be doing the last lesson, the last lesson, um, which is almost a, it's a total of about five lessons. Um, but anyways, um, this one here is on, in times like these, be ready for the soon coming of Christ. This is on the signs of the end times. Um, so I'm going to read. It's in days like these that you know that the Lord is coming soon for his church. Well, so I'm going to read um, Matthew 24. And since we're in that same book, I'm going to go ahead and read Matthew 24, 6 through 8. And um, if things get a little blurry, it's because I, I didn't bring my glasses, so they might be a little blurry. So Matthew 24, 6 through 8, it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. See, so those are all a part of the end times. Because the, um, the disciples asked, um, if you read Matthew 24, Matthew 24, 2, it says, And Jesus said unto them, See ye not, see ye not all these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat down, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, so all these are going to be a sign of, the, of when the Lord's coming and of the end of the world, it says. So we just read a few of them where there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, famines and earthquakes in diverse places. And um, the other one we're going to read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. So in Matthew 24, 37 says, But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So in the times of Noah, Noah and the ark, it says, um, Verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noe, Noe entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See, so it seems like Whenever there's a marriage, when the people of God are getting married, that's when I think of the think of this scripture, because those are all signs of the end times. You know the um, you might say, oh, there's people getting married all the time, but yeah, yeah, they are. There are people getting married all the time, but. We need to remember that this word of God is it's for the people of God. This word of God here is for the people of God. And, and so when the people of God are getting married, that's when those are all signs of the end times. So the next one we'll look at is, um, let's, like they say, look in Luke. Let's look in Luke. Uh, Luke 21. There's Luke in Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke 21. So 
so Luke 21, verses 25 to 28. It says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. See? So men's hearts failing them for fear of things to come, that's just a part of it. And again, like I said, it's for the people of God. So men, men of God out there, you know, just give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Don't worry about what's coming. Because we, you know, we don't have to be having these heart attacks. Amen. Not, you know, just just hang in there. We need to cast our cares upon the Lord and and um so yeah, all these are are signs of the end times. This is just a part of it. Men's hearts failing them. And we just read a few more. It says in verse 27, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. You know, I, I sometimes I think about that and I think, wow. You know, a lot of times people think, you know, it's cloudy, it's raining outside, and it's cloudy. And, you know, that's when you probably see the clouds and whatever. But I thought, what I've thought about, what if the Lord comes when there is no clouds? Mm. When it's no clouds out there and all you see is that cloud. Mm. You know, it's, but we won't know because we just need to remember that these are all signs of the end times. Mm. Men's hearts failing them for fear of things to come. Um, let's go to, let's go ahead and look to, um, let's go to Second Timothy, or First Timothy 3. Let's go to First Timothy 3, 4 to 5. Second Timothy chapter 3, 4 through 5 says, Traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. See? And just so that you know that it's talking about the last days, verse 1, 2 Timothy 3, 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. See? And uh, perilous times in the uh, New American Standard, it says dangerous times. Dangerous times are in the last days. And it says, verse 2, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. See? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, see? Truce breakers, what's a truce breaker? Someone that breaks promises. It's a promise breaker. False accusers, see that, false accusers? Those that go around accusing people falsely. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. See? Despisers of those that are good. 
So mm -hmm. th those are all signs of the end times. Mm -hmm. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure. Pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. From such, turn away. See, all of that is in the last days. So, we just read that. The other one is right there, disobedient to parents, unthankful, proud, unholy. See, in these last days, we need to be thankful. We need to be thankful in these last days, not unthankful. We don't need to fulfill that scripture. We need to be thankful in these last days. Okay, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 2 through 8. First Thessalonians 5, 2 through 8 says, I'm going to read verse 1. <clears throat> it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And don't get scared because it says as a thief in the night. Because... He's only gonna come for a, he's only gonna come as a thief in the night to those that aren't ready. To those that ain't ready, he's gonna come as a thief in the night. But if you're ready, the Bible says if you're ready, you're gonna know when that thief comes. You're gonna know and you're gonna know and you're gonna be waiting. You're gonna be watching and make sure you don't get broken into. It says Verse 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. See, we're not in darkness. We're children of the light. We're children of the light, and those that are in the light... It's not going to overtake us as a thief, it says. Therefore, let us not, not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. See, we need to be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. See, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. So you're going to put on that helmet, that helmet of salvation, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us. Verse 9, this is extra. To wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 11. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 11, verses 10 to 12. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people 
which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Verse 12, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outposts or the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. See? So he's going to bring them back together in the last days. <clears throat> and those are all signs of the end times. And one thing that I, that I did, that I do have is, and it's not in here, it's not in here, but it's Joel 2.28. In Joel 2.28, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Joel 2.28. Joel 2.28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens or the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Verse 30, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved or shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. See, all these, these things are going to happen in the last days. The Lord is going to pour out His Spirit. Amen. So, that was the that was the one on the um, the signs of the end times. Now we're going to go ahead and do um, the next one, which is the rapture. And the raptures, it's a word that that's not in the Bible. But what you will find is catching away or caught up. We'll be caught up. Like I said, the raptures, it's not there. The concept is there, but... So I'm going to read First Thessalonians chapter 3, or 4. See, it's blurry. So First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians four thirteen through eighteen. It says, But I would but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, and that word asleep is they're dead. <clears throat> that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So we're He's telling them not to, um, not to sorrow, not to be sorrow, not to have sorrow as those that don't have hope. It says, I'll start over, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, 
concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as the others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. See, so Jesus died and rose again. And so those that which um, sleep in Jesus, those that, uh, that die in the Lord, that die knowing the Lord, means the people of God. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. See, so those that that died in the Lord, they're going to rise first. <clears throat> then, then it says, verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. These words are supposed to bring comfort to us because we're going to be caught up with the Lord in the air one day when He, um, like it says, when He, um, when He descends from heaven with the shout, and then it says, and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. So it says the, the living and the resurrected saints caught up. We're going to be caught up with the Lord. And who's going to be caught up? In the last days, born again believers. Born again believers. Remember way back in the first, first lesson we did? Except ye be born again of water and spirit, ye cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you need to be born again to be caught up in the air with the Lord. That's the first resurrection. And we'll go to Revelation 20 verse 6. Revelation 20 verse 6. Revelation 20 verse 6 says, <clears throat> it says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So those that are Raptured or caught up in the air, we're gonna be, we're gonna reign with, with Jesus for a thousand years. Amen. For a thousand years, we're gonna be up there. And um, <clears throat> so, those that are caught up in the air, those that make the rapture, you made it. You made it. You won't be right here. At the judgment seat, the judgment seat of Christ. If you're gonna, right now is the time to make it. Right now is the time to make it. Right now, it's time to be born again of water and spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Do what it takes to to get saved now. Because if not, 
things are going to get hard. Things are going to get hard here after that. The um, the judgment seat of Christ. Um, let's go to First Corinthians, chapter three. Revelations. Revelation. First Corinthians three. <clears throat> three thirteen to fifteen says, "For every man's work shall be made manifest; for the day shall declare it." because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. See? So everything we do, Everything we do is going to be, we're going to be tried. We're going to be tried, the Bible says, and, and we're going to be tried by fire. Not so much, not, it, it's not literal fire. You know I'm going to come and burn you. Right. Okay, but, you know, just the trials and tribulations we go through, mm -hmm. we're going to be tried. Right. We'll be tried and and those that overcome those trials and, t and tribulations, all those, you know, we're going to be saved, the Bible says. In verse 15, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. All those things we go through, it's, it's good that we're going through them because they make us stronger, they make us better, they make us they'll make us worthy amen if that's the right word if it's not it's not um, the people of God when they came out of Egypt when they came out of Egypt they had a hard time it wasn't easy but those that endured unto the end they got to come into the promised land and it wasn't easy there was t there was hard times 40 years of hard times and um but they made it to the promised land. And, and likewise, you know, if we hang in there till the end, we're going to make it. So let's go to... I'm going to go to um, Matthew 24, 40. Matthew 24, 40. says it says then shall two be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left verse 41 two women shall be grinding at the mill the one shall be taken and the other left watch therefore for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come but know this that if the goodman of the house had, had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. See, there it is again about the thief in the night, so you, know, you out there, watch your houses. Watch your houses. Make sure the thief don't come. But, uh, you know, we, um, we need to be ready. We need to be ready. It says that, just giving an example, you know, you're, you're going to be working at your job and the Lord will take you up and your, your co-workers, if they don't know the Lord, if they're not born again, water and spirit, and they'll, they'll have to stay behind. 
they'll have to stay behind. They won't even be able to, they won't even have a chance to hang on to your coat. <laughs> like, like they say the Jews, to hang, hang on to the Jews coat. But, um, you know, they ain't even gonna know it's gonna be that fast, a twinkling of an eye. So, two will be working, two women will be working together likewise, and it says, two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. You know, just make sure you're the one. Amen. And uh, it'd be better if both of you went. Amen. Tell your co-workers about the Lord. That we use both leave. That's right. And uh, going where? Well, let's go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19, 7 through 10. Revelation 19. Revelation 19, 7 through 10, it's, this is the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's where we're going. We're going to go eat. We're going to go eat in heaven. <laughs> we're going to go eat in heaven. Yeah. The marriage of the Lamb. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. See, we're going to go eat. We're going to go eat some, some heavenly food, some manna. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See that? The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to read Revelation 20, verse 5. It says, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. See? And we read the other verse. So the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. See? And we'll see why. We'll see why because the um when we get to the um, to the white throne judgment to the white throne judgment so those that make the rapture we made it we'll be with the Lord for those thousand years we're going to be helping and we're going to uh, it says we shall be priests of God verse 6 I'll just read it Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. So we're, we're going to reign with the Lord for a thousand years if we make the rapture. Okay. After that, then there's... There's the white, we'll get to the white throne judgment. But first,
first we got to talk about the, the manifestation and the Antichrist. Okay, so let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to learn about the manifestation and the reign of the Antichrist. This is where we're at almost. We're almost here. Right here. We're almost here. These days we're living in, we're almost here. We're almost about to, to see who the Antichrist is. See 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm gonna read I'm gonna read 1 through 12. Because we're gonna find out, we're gonna read about his coming, the coming of the Antichrist. His coming is after the working of Satan with all power and deceivableness. Because they receive not the love of the truth, men were men will be deceived. <clears throat> They're gonna be deceived. If you don't love the word of God, if you don't love the truth of the word of God, this Antichrist is gonna come and you're gonna believe every word he says. <clears throat> so Second Thessalonians chapter two. <clears throat> now we beseech you, brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. <clears throat> See? As that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. See, and that's what I was telling my wife the other day. Let no man deceive you by any means. Even here in church, even here in church, and when I preach, when I teach and preach, we can't just believe everything. We can't believe everything anybody says, even if they think, if you think they're in the Word of God and telling you everything, you need to get into the Word of God yourself and read it and know what it says. Right. You need to know what the Word of God says yourself so that if I, if I say something wrong, if I preach something that, that isn't right, you should be able to pick it up and you should question it. You should question it. Ask, ask questions. Ask, you know, because because we can't be wrong. We can't afford to be wrong, and right. <clears throat> and we need to. You need to know yourself the word of God, what it says. So don't be afraid to question it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If if I say something that. Maybe it goes against what you read. Ask, ask, because I, I've always asked. Right. I've always asked, I've always questioned because we need to know. We need to know what the Word of God so so that we don't be deceived, see? And with all power and deceivableness, see? Men will be deceived. You can't be deceived. You need to know. So let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, so there's going to come a falling away first. You know what that means? There's going to be people leaving the church there's going to be people backsliding. And we can't be amongst that group of people. 
we can't be amongst those that backslide. So we need to come back. If you've left the Lord, you need to come back. Right. Don't fulfill this scripture. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're falling away, you're fulfilling this scripture yeah. of falling away first. And you need to come back so that you don't fulfill this. Right. It says, except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. See? The son of perdition. So that son of, this son of perdition is going to be revealed. <clears throat> Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. He's going to go and he's going to sit on a throne and he's going to think he's God just because of the things he's going to be doing. See, and he, or that is worshipped. See, he's going to want to be worshipped. <clears throat> Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time. And now you know what withhold it, <clears throat> that he might be revealed in his time. You know what keeps it from, you know what holds it back? We hold it back. We hold it back. We hold it back with our prayers and our intercession for the world. We hold it back. No. But it's not over. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let. Until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. See? Only he who now lets it will let. Only he who now lets it will let. Until we be taken out of the way. When we're taken out of the way. Then it says. And then verse 8. Then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. <clears throat> because they received not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. See. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. In them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. We need to love the word of God. We need to fall in love with the word of God. So that you don't. So that you're not deceived. Amen. That they might be saved. Verse 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. See, God is going to do that. It says, for this cause, for what cause? For the cause that they, they didn't have a love for the truth. If you don't have a love for the truth, God is going to send you a strong delusion and you're going to believe the lie. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. People are going to believe the lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh, that's why we need to fall in love with the Word of God. We need to fall in love with the Word of God. Amen. So that we, so that we make it. We need to make it. Um, let's go to Revelation 13.
I'm going to read 16. Let's see, where should I start? Well, this says 15, let's read, or 16, let's read 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And I'll keep going. Verse 18 says, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, 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 six. See, so that's what this Antichrist is going to do. He's going to cause people to, to take the mark of the beast. They're gonna, either a mark on their forehead or on their right hand. And um, they were, um, they're talking about um, letting people um, work, or at least where I work, um, we're gonna be able to work, but when we go into work, they're gonna start taking people's temperatures and the, one of the best places to take a temperature is right on the forehead. Right on the forehead. With the, 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 the however they, whatever they use, the gun or... Is that infrared? Infrared. Okay. Infrared. Mm -hmm. Infrared gun, just... And, uh, well, that's just a step. That's one step closer. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I like to think of uh, one way would be, yeah, they take your temperature. They take your temperature, write down who you are and what your temperature is, but just for ease, making things easier in the future, very, very, very near future. They'll just put a little chip or whatever on your forehead or your right hand and they take your temperature, but it also gives them all your information of who you are. So they don't even have to know who you are. They just take your temp temperature and they got all your information there and, and it's there. They, they'll have your whole life story there. You know, they can something to easily do. You could be across the street and people, the, the COVID-19 patrol, I'll, for, I'll just say it. <laughs> it's, it's, it not, not that it's out there already, but you know, I'm just saying there'll be a, for example, there could be a COVID-19 patrol out there, just like the cops with those out there just checking. They could be out there checking temperatures and just randomly taking temperatures and they can easily read, read that chip on your forehead, know who you are, where you are, where you live. So if you got a temperature, hey, we'll just go to his house, make sure he locks down, put him, put him under quarantine right there at his house. We don't even have to chase him. We know where he's at. But that's just the way I think. <clears throat> Let's go to Revelation 14.10. So yeah, we're living that close. We're close to the, uh, the mark of the beast, the Antichrist. Revelation 14.10 says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup 
of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And I'll read 11, it says, And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. <clears throat> so those who worship the beast will be tormented with fire and brimstone. So this says, those who worship him will be tormented with fire and brimstone. But uh, it's there. It's there. Um, we're we're in those days. We're we're so close to to the manifestation of the antichrist. You're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you have that mark of the beast. By yourself, you know what? That means you'll be fasting. You'll be doing a lot of fasting, so it's time to fast now. We need to fast now because then you will be forced to fast. And you probably ain't going to do it. You're going to take the mark and eat. So let's go to the Great Tribulation. So, the Great Tribulation. <clears throat> In Revelation chapter 16, which is pretty much the whole, the whole chapter. So in this chapter here, sun, the sun is going to have power to scorch men with fire. It's going to be that hot. Lightning, great earthquakes, great hail. The rivers and the oceans are going to turn to blood. Grievous sores. That's the, king, the kingdom of the beast. It's going to turn to darkness. See, and we read that even in the, um, in the I think it was in Job 2.28, we read it. We read some of that. But... Uh, in Revelation 16, it's, we won't read the whole thing, but you can read that on your free time. It says, um, verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. See, this wrath of God... This wrath of God here is going to be after, after the resurrection. The people of God, we're not going to be here. We're, going to, we're not going to be here when this takes place. We're not going to be here for the wrath of God. Okay. And, um, let's see. It says, the first vial, and the first vial went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and, grease, and grievous sore upon the men, which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped the image. See, those that worshipped the image. The second vial, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea so no fishing then there is no fishing then so if you like fishing do it all before then do it all before that The third vial and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, 
which art and was and shall be because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink. For they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. The fourth and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. All these things are happening. And it says, And they blasphemed the name of God which hath the power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory see people people they, they're going to blame God they're going to blaspheme his name and they ain't even going to repent you think they would with all these things going on you think they would repent and ask God to forgive them you would think they'd repent that was the fourth seal the fifth seal says and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the sea upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain mm -hmm. and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds See, people are still going to blaspheme the name of God and for the pain they have and, and they're still not going to repent. <clears throat> they're still not going to repent. Even in the midst of all these things that are going on, all these things that are taking place, they still don't repent. The sixth vial and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth. See those spirits like frogs? Those frogs represent those lying spirits. They're lying spirits. <clears throat> For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. See? And he gathered them together unto a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. <clears throat> See, so he's getting them ready for that, that Armageddon. He's getting them ready for the Ar battle of Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven and the throne, saying, It is done. And, when, and then were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the city of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance. From before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, and every island fled, 
away in the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great tale out of heaven. Every stone about the weight of a talent and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. See, so men again blaspheming God. So people, we don't, people, you know, we, we're stubborn, we don't listen, and we don't listen, we don't repent. They don't repent, they didn't repent. We should. No. What does it take? <clears throat> Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon. This is it right here. The battle of Armageddon. Of course, like I said, we ain't going to be here. We won't be here. The people of God ain't going to be here. Let's go to let's go to Matthew twenty four thirty. the second coming of Jesus Christ. Matthew 24, 30 says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, <clears throat> and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's in. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. Um, since we're there, I'm gonna let's go to Revelation 19 again. This is gonna take us all over the place, <laughs> but we'll do it. Revelation 19. Through 16 it says and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's see what Jude 14, 15 says. <clears throat> Jude is just before Revelation. Jude 14 and 15 says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things. <clears throat> Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them. 
among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. <clears throat> so that's, let's go ahead and read Revelation 16 for the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon. So Revelation 16. I'm going to read 13 through 16. It says, And I saw three un... Oh, we just read that. <laughs> See, so we just read that. So the remember the frogs, they're, those spirits like frogs, those are like... Those are spirits like... Uh, or, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet so those are for they are the spirits of devils okay. those are lying, the lying spirits let's read Revelation 17 12 through 14 it says and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no power, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. See, so that the battle of Armageddon, um, let's read the, um, the judgment of the living nations in Matthew 25, Matthew 25, 31 to 34. Thirty-one to thirty-four says, "When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them, one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and He shall set the sheep on His right hand." but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. See, so, the judgment of the living nation. So he's going to take the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. At one time you probably want to be a sheep. You want to be a sheep on the right. Let's let's go to Zechariah 14, 1 through 4. says behold the day of the Lord cometh and they spoil and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle 
and the city shall be taken and the houses rifled and the women ravished and half of the city shall go forth into captivity the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the mist thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. See, so the um, so the Lord says the day of the Lord shall behold the day of the Lord cometh and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. So he's going to gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken. And we just read that. So that's going to be for the, the battle of Armageddon. And then in the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2.8. Of course, we read that already. But just to see, 2 Thessalonians 2.8. So the Antichrist and the false prophet are destroyed. In 2 Thessalonians 2.8 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the Spirit with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. <clears throat> In Revelation 19.20 <clears throat> Revelation 19.20 says, And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone See? now let's go to Revelation 21 through 3 where Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years <clears throat> so remember when we uh, when the church is raptured when the church is raptured we're going to reign with the Lord for a thousand years it says we're going to be priests of God for a thousand years it's the same thousand years that Satan's going to be bound Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years Revelation 21 through 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season <clears throat> see so he's going to be bound for a thousand years and in those thousand years people are going to get to serve the Lord and get in that's where we get to this part, the millennial, the reign of Jesus Christ. Okay. In Revelation 26, since we're there, you know what we'll read? Revelation 26 all the way to 9. It 
says on change this one to so in Revelation 20 verse 6 says <clears throat> We read that again too. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such. The second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So in these thousand years, they call it the, the millennial, the reign of Jesus Christ. The millennial, thousand. <clears throat> so... And I'll read here again. We'll read 20 to 9, 7 through 9. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now read 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. See? So Satan's going to be loosed after those thousand years and then <clears throat> so he's going to come. In those thousand years, people are still going to be able to serve God. But they won't be able to blame the devil. They won't be able to say, well, the devil made me do it. The devil, he made me do it like people do now. The devil doesn't make anybody do anything. That's right. We willingly do it. That's just an excuse. So here people ain't gonna be able to blame him because he's gonna be loose or bound for a thousand years. And then he's gonna be loosed after that. And uh, and shall go out to deceive the nations. So he'll go out to deceive and do what he does. So when, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 2. Yeah, let's go to Isaiah 12, uh, 2. says and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore see that's what it's going to be like in the in the thousand years <coughs> Let's see, let's read. <clears throat> let's read Isaiah 11, since we're in the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 11, 6 through 9. It says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall be shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones. Let me start off. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. 
and the young and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp and the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Go to Isaiah 65, <clears throat> 20. The child shall die being a hundred years old. In six, Isaiah 65, 20. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. So, so <clears throat> the child shall be, shall live to be a hundred. It says, the earth shall bring forth abundantly. The earth shall bring forth abundantly. Let's read Isaiah 65, 22 to 23. It says, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and my elect, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. So we shall bring, or they shall bring forth abundantly. <clears throat> Let's read Isaiah 35. Isaiah 35, 1 through 2 says, The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. See, it's all in the same abundance. Let's go to Zechariah 8.12. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. See? This is all in the millennium. Holy Ghost filled believers will judge the world. We're going to judge the world. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Or hold on, before we leave Zechariah, we'll read Zechariah 14.8 since we're there. It says, And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them 
toward the former scene and half of them toward the hinder sea in summer and in winter shall it be. See? That'll be in that same day. Since we're, let's go to Revelation since we're on that same, let's go to Revelation 1. Revelation 1, 5, and 6. It says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests, unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's go to see there it was again we were going to be and hath made us kings and priests. So in Revelation eleven fifteen. Says, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Okay. So the Lord, he's going to reign forever and ever. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians, or since we're in Revelations, let's go to Revelation because it says Holy Ghost believers will judge the world. Let's go to Revelation 3.21. It says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and then sat down with my father in his throne. Okay. Now let's go to Revelations 5, 9 through 10. Revelation 5, 9 through 10 it says, And they sung a, a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations or nation and hath made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. See, so we're going to reign on the earth. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 2. It says, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? See, so we're going to judge the world. We're going to judge the world, it says. And of course, this was talking about verse 1. There are any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. See, we're, we, we as the people of God, we're going to judge the world, it says. And yet you weren't able to judge the, these matters between yourselves you just have to go to a worldly judge to judge I think it says shame on you <laughs> verse 5 it says 
I speak to your shame. I speak to your shame, it says. Because you weren't able to judge between the brethren. You just had to take care of your things out there in the worldly courts. That's why the people of God, as the people of God, we're not supposed to take other people of God to court. You're not supposed to take your brother to court. Because it says you couldn't take care of it yourselves. He says, shame on you. And me if I do that. So that, that was the millennial. The millennial is the thousand year reign. So the last. The white throne judgment. This is the white throne judgment here. This is where you want to be on the other side. You want to already be up there with the Lord judging. Because if, you, if you're down here waiting to be judged, you probably didn't make it. Unless you were in another dispensation, another era. If you're listening to this and you're like a thousand years later, then maybe you can have a chance. <clears throat> or maybe if you made it through um, through the time of the Antichrist. And if you're listening to this, you need to make it now. Amen. Let's go to Revelation 20. Revelation 20, 11 through 5 through 15. Revelation 20, 11 through 15 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the dead, small and great stand before God, and the books were opened. See, these books here, they're going to be opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books which were, in, which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and this where it says and death and hell that's not the lake of fire hell that's the grave it says and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire See, because people will say, how can death or how can how be cast, how can the lake of fire be cast into the lake of fire? So yeah, that how right, where it says how, it's the grave. And death and how were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, <clears throat> was cast into the lake of fire. See, those that, if your name isn't written in the Lamb's book of life, you can be cast into the lake of fire to get your name written into the book of life. You need to be born again of water and spirit. So that's the white throne judgment. It says, um, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Who's going to be there? Who's going to be in the in hell or the lake of fire? <clears throat> the devil and his angels are going to be there. It's 
go to Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. So 25, 41, Matthew says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, they're going to be there in the lake of fire. Who else is going to be there? Slothful servants. Slothful servants. In Matthew 25, 26 through 30. <clears throat> says, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. <clears throat> Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken, <clears throat> shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, weeping and gnashing of teeth. It don't sound like a good time. These people here are not going to be having a good time. Who else is going to be there? <clears throat> the backsliders. In Hebrews 10.29. Let's go to Hebrews 10.29. Hebrews 10.29 says, Of how much sorer punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. So the backsliders are going to be there. Who else is going to be there? The ungodly. The ungodly are going to be there. Let's go to Second Peter three seven. <clears throat> Seven says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the ungodly men are going to be there. And those who receive not the love for the truth. Let's go to Second Thessalonians. Wait. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse eight through ten. So those who receive not the love of, of the truth, and then shall they, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perished because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So those who didn't love the truth are going to be there. And let's go to 2 Thessalonians 1.8. So those who obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ are going to be there <clears throat> in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from thy presence of, from the presence of, of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So those who obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ are going to be there too. And um, let's see. we'll read Revelation. I was going to say before they, uh, before I get to that, these here they're at the white throne judgment. They're at the white throne judgment and they're all in line waiting to be judged. And this line is going to be a single line. And it's just going to be going and going and going. Because you know what? There's, they're not going to be in any hurry to get there. There's going to be no hurry, no rush. Time isn't going to exist. So the Lord is going to judge everyone. One by one. One by one. They're going to be judged. And whatever excuse you have now. Whatever excuse you have now for not serving the Lord. You can tell that to the Lord right there. You can tell the Lord your excuse why you don't come to church, your excuse why you don't get baptized in Jesus' name, why you don't receive the Holy Ghost, why you don't do any of that, why you don't live a holy life. You can tell that to the Lord right there <clears throat> when He's right there at the white throne judgment. And there's, like I said, they're, they ain't going to be in a hurry. They're not going to be in a hurry because time doesn't exist. And he, he's going to throw them. Well, he's going to say, you're either going to go to the right or to the left. Mm -hmm. And you could give him those excuses right there at the White Throne Judgment and see how it sounds. You see how it sounds and all these people here in the lake of fire, some of them are saying, I did need the Holy Ghost. I did need the Holy Ghost. Some was saying, lost, lost forever. Well, this one here is saying, my name was not there. Your name wasn't there in the Lamb's Book of Life, which is there when you get born again. When you're born again of water and spirit, your name is there. And there's, you can name whatever excuse you want. It'll be there. Let's go to Revelation 21, 1. Or before I go to Revelation 21, 1, let's go to Revelation 20, or Revelation 10, 27. <clears throat> the new heaven and the new earth. Revelation 21 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. See? So the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. 
this world we're living in, it says it's passed away. The new Jerusalem. Let's go to Revelation 21, 2, which keeps going. It says, And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. See? There's the new Jerusalem. And you notice how it, uh, how it compared the, the bride as a bride adorned for her husband. So it compares the husband and wife relationship as the Lord and, and his church, his bride. In this case, it's the New Jerusalem. And uh, you can read that and to see what it's like. And um, let's see what did catch my eyes was um, my blurry eyes was Revelation 6, 21, 6 says, And he said unto me, It is done. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. See? So this is the new Jerusalem coming down so that's pretty much it we want to make it to heaven we want to make it to heaven now yeah. you read the book of Revelation 21 and it's 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 a pretty good place it's an awesome place um, I think I was reading it and somewhere and then it said the walls the walls of this new Jerusalem it says there are 144 cubits, 144 cubits, the stature of a man, it says. And then it says, that is, of an angel. 144 cubits. <clears throat> and, um, and I forgot how many feet that was. <laughs> but... Um, if you multiply 144 times 18, that'll give you the height of it. Because it, if it's the same, a cubit is the same measurement as the other parts of scripture, it's 18 inches. Mm -hmm. So you take 144 times 18 inches, mm -hmm. and that's the height of the wall. Mm -hmm. it's, it's big, really big. Mm -hmm. If you got a calculator, you can do it. It's almost twice that. Figure 20 times 144. That's what, 288? Mm -hmm. it's, it's under 288 feet or inches. I don't know, somewhere. It's, it's big. Just the walls thereof. Just the walls. And, there's, and then it says the height of a man, an angel. <clears throat> these angels are tall let me tell you these angels are tall so that concludes the um, <clears throat> the seven lessons okay and before we we're, we're over um, I just want to say thank yous for everything <clears throat> for putting up with these seven lessons and I probably should have said it at the beginning, but um, you can print these out. You can print these out. Just click on that YouTube um, arrow, mm -hmm. and it'll. You'll see it right there. You can print this whole chart out. Mm 